Hey everybody, I thought I would make one more video before I present my Great Pyramid Symbolism video and how it relates to the Temple of Tep-2-F, the Temple of Anubis, that the ancient Egyptians clearly identify in their most ancient text. Um, I thought I would talk a little bit about Orion because that's very important and uh, something I wanted to mention in my last video, the two pyramids on the Giza Plateau were built for one purpose and the third pyramid was added just to say by the ancient Egyptians, by the way, it's all about Orion and people have talked about the pyramids on the Giza Plateau representing Orion's belt and sure that is an easy um, conclusion to come to just by their appearance but what seals the deal for me is the ancient text that clearly tells you it is all about Orion and they associated here with Giza and there is a, a phrase in the ancient text that Egypt was the reflection of the heavens or Giza was and in ancient times if this was a lake not only do you have the stars of Orion, but on still nights, all the stars would have reflected in the lake. And this would have been an awe-inspiring scene to view about uh, 11,700 years ago. And I'll talk about that in just a second. But I want my Giza Plateau symbolism and the Great Pyramid symbolism video to be well thought out and well done. A lot of my videos I just read and then I just find a few minutes to talk about it and I usually forget stuff and I don't like the way I present a lot of my videos but the Great Pyramid symbolism video I'm going to take my time and I wasn't really sure how I was going to present that but after what I read this weekend I got that one by the balls. I just got to put it together in a way that you can all understand easily. And I just think this information ha should have been brought out by now, simply because the ancient Egyptians, in their text, and you, you, you can't read it in current day, you know, thinking, you have to take your minds back almost 12,000 years and figure out the words and what they relate to. But the story of the symbolism of Giza is told by the ancient Egyptians, and I just want to read for just a little bit and I don't want to do a lot of reading during my Great Pyramid Symbolism video. I think I'll just lose people in the meeting. So I'm just going to read here and just tell you um, the text and it's all about Orion. Now this comes from a book written in 1901 based on the invocations and what is sometimes called the Book of the Dead and other things from Egypt and I will leave a link and a description of the book in uh, the description box but I just want to read and this is all about the Great Pyramid and I will directly relate that in my symbolism video of the Great Pyramid and the Temple of Tep 2F, the Temple of Anubis who in the ancient text says he's guarding the box coffin of Orion says, Welcome to thee, Osiris, Lord of the length of times, King of the gods, of many names, of holy transformations, of mysterious forms in the temples, August being residing in Tatu, Great One contained in Sokem, Master of Invocations in Ant, Principal of Abundance in An, who has the right to command in the place of double justice. Mysterious Soul, Lord of Karur, Holy One of the White Wall, Soul of the Sun, His Very Body, Reposing in Satu Ken, Author of Invocations in the Region of Tree of the Tree Nur, Whose Soul is Existing for Vigilance, Lord of the Great Dwelling in Sesnua, The Very Awful in Shashotep, Lord of the length of times in Abydos. And who was the Lord of the length of times in Abydos? And who was the Lord of Abydos? And why is there something called the mountain of Anubis in Abydos? Because he was the God and the Lord of the length of times. Why is Anubis called the Lord of the length of times? Because he is facing the rising sun on the spring equinox. 
That is very important. Now, he is called also the Lord of the Length of Times, and I think this is even more important, because in the Dendera Zodiac, Anubis is represented right in the middle with everything spiraling out in obvious depiction of time spiraling out from a center point. The ancient Egyptians identify Anubis as the original god and this time period is about ni around 9600 BC. The Lord of the Length of Times, he is at the center of the Dendera Zodiac at 9600 BC. To me, the ancient Egyptians are telling us when the Great Shrine of Anubis was constructed and when the Great Pyramids were constructed. And that was roughly about 11,600 years ago, around the time of Cancer, and they depict that on this Dendera Zodiac, the Lord of the Length of Times. It's Anubis, and this would be the start. That is the greatest proof, for me, of the dating of the Great Pyramid and the Sphinx. But that is all up for speculation. What do I know? That is just based on many, many hours of research and reading. Now, let me go back to the reading here. The road to his dwelling is in the Tosar. His name is stable in men's mouths. He is the Potai of the world, a tomb, feeder of the beings among gods, benefit spirit in the abode of the spirits. From him the heavenly Nile derives its waters. From him comes the wind and respirable air is in his nostrils for his satisfaction and taste of his heart. For him the ground brings forth to abundance. In obedience to him is in the upper heaven and its stars, and he opens the great gates. He is the master of invocations in the southern heavens and of adorations in the north heavens. The moving constellations are under the place of his face they are his dwellings, as also the reposing constellations. And here in the hymn to Osiris, maybe one of the most important hymns of, Egy of Egyptian history, the constellations are clearly mentioned. And Egyptologists such as Mark Lehner and Zahi Awas and that group, all their study of Egyptian history is what they can find in the ground. They totally disregard the stars and archaeoastronomy. And that's why Zahi Oas flipped out at Graham Hancock during their debate when he showed the sky and the pyramids. Do you see a problem there? It says, The constellations are under the place of his face, that they are his dwellings, as also the reposing constellations. Now, I think that's very important. Now, it goes on. They see him, those who are there, the August ones, and stand in awe of, stand in awe of him. The whole earth glorifies him when his holiness proceeds on the vault of the sky. He is a Sahu, and Sahu can be read as spirit body, it can be read as Sahu, or it can be read as Orion. He is a Sahu or Orion, illustrious among the Orions or Sahus or spiritual bodies, great in dignity, permanent in empire. He is the excellent master of the gods, fair and beloved by all who see him. He imposes his fear to all lands so that they like to exalt his name to the first rank. Through him all are in abundance, Lord of fame in heaven and on earth multiplied are his acclamations in the feast of Auk. And these pronunciations just, I, yeah, I'm doing my best. Acclamations are made to him by the two worlds unanimously, and two and twofold in pairs. That's very important because it all has to do with the double pyramids, and I will talk about that in my next video. He is the eldest, the first of his brothers, the chief of the gods. He, he it is who maintains justice in the two worlds, who places the son in the seat of his father, he is the praise of his father Seb, the love of his mother now, or no, very villiant. He overthrows the impure 
invincible, he strikes his opponent, and his opponent, it's not like an army or, you know, it, this is all symbolic. He strikes his opponent, he inspires his fear to his enemy, an enemy is not like an army or a group of people. He seizes the wicked one's boundaries, firm of heart, his feet are vigilant, and this is all about an initiation at the Great Pyramid. He is the offspring of Seb, ruling the two worlds. He, Seb, has seen his virtues and has commanded him to conduct by the nations by the hand continuously. He has made this world with his hand, its waters, its atmosphere, its vegetation, all its flocks, all its flying things, all its fish and its reptiles and quadrupeds. Justice is rendered to the son of now, and the world is at quiet when he ascends the seat of his father like the sun. He shines at the horizon, he enlightens the darkness, he illuminates shades by his double plume. He inundates the world like the sun every morning. His diadem predominates at the top of heaven and accompanies the stars. He is the guide of all the gods. He is beneficent in will and words. He is the praise of the great gods, the love of the small gods. His sister took care of him by dissipating his enemies, repelling luck or repelling bad luck. She sends forth her voice by virtues of her mouth wise as tongue, no word of hers fails. She is benefic beneficent in will and speech. It is Isis, the beneficent, the avenger of her brother. She unrepentantly sought him. She went round the world lamenting him. She went round of the world lamenting him. She stopped not until she found him. She shadowed with her wings her wings caused wings, making the invocation of her brother's burial. Now, that, I think, is very important. They identify Orion and ruling the two worlds and conquering his enemies. I'm going to tie this all in to the Great Pyramid symbolism on my next video. Why this hasn't been brought to you before and why people can't connect this to the Great Pyramid symbolism. I have no idea. Hope you thought this was interesting, and you all have a very nice day.